Welcome back to World War II Jeep and Rifle. Today I'm working on a World War II 1945 DC generator. This is a PE210, PE210, and uh, it generates about 400 watts at a variable 6 to 22 volt specified uh, rating. And you control that with this control box right here. <clears throat> um, this also allows you to reverse the uh, the current. If you have a if you have a charged battery, 12 volt battery, you can actually start the motor with an electric start, passing the current through the generator itself to turn the the crankcase flywheel. Um, uh, alternately, there's a, a rope pull start on the other side, <clears throat> and then this was used to charge batteries of different voltages: six, 12, 24. <clears throat> and uh, anyway, I had this thing running nearly nearly perfectly, uh, generating voltage, starting electrically, can read the, the power output on this meter box, and then I noticed gas leaking from it, uh, from out of the carburetor. Um, so, you know, small engines uh, may, may be scary at first, but uh, once you once you get into them, um, you know, there's some pretty basic stuff and it's easy enough to tackle. So I'm going to show you what I found on the carburetor as a, just an example of, of an easy fix. So here we, here we go. I'll bring you up close. All right. The carburetor is this unit right here. This is the air filter intake. This is the carburetor itself. Here's the fuel line into the carburetor, which I've already disconnected. And this is the governor. And interestingly, this has an elect electronic governor with an electrical solenoid, which can control the throttle based on the load on the generator or based on the, the power setting that you have set. So uh, just show you the, the basic disassembly here, pulling the air cleaner off and check this out. Look at that. Uh, I don't think this, this generator got used much or ever. So pristine, if you ask me. Now we're looking down into the throat or the air, the air uh, intake and uh, try to move this fuel line out of the way enough. There were two screws uh, holding the top of the carburetor on and I have already removed those. So when, when I pull this lid off, we can see the problem. All right, this, this is the top of the carburetor <coughs> and uh, it's part of the fuel management system. So there's a float, it's, it's made of cork in the bowl on the other side where I pulled it out from. And the lid includes a needle valve. And the needle valve is stuck. It will not, it will not uh, shut. And these are stiff. These, these should be free to move, but they're stiff. So I'm, I'm guessing that, that there's some residues or gunk in the hinges that are keeping them from from uh, moving freely and you see as as I move these hinges down the that little post is is also moving up and down that as that post goes up it should seat into the orifice where the fuel is coming in and shut off the fuel coming in <clears throat> and it wasn't shutting off because it wasn't moving freely as the cork moves up in the bowl as the bowl fills with, with fuel, the needle valve needs to close and prevent more fuel from coming in. But it wasn't, it wasn't closing, and I was flooding and, uh, and then overflowing fuel out of the carburetor. So uh, the fix here is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull these pins to uh, uh, disassemble the hinge <coughs> and uh, release the, the, uh, the needle valve itself, and I'll clean it all up put it back together and hopefully have free movement and fuel cut off as the carb bowl fills up. That way you can prevent flooding. Anyway, just a, you know, kind of a quick demonstration. Thought that, uh, you know, it was kind of a classic carb problem with flooding. You, you're likely to find a, a stuck needle valve in your carburetor when you get flooding or overflow of fuel. It won't shut off. Um, and, uh, indeed that's, that's what I found. So clean it up, reassemble it, 
and give it another shot. I'll uh, I'll I'll do that and then show you this running motor in just a sec. All right, carbs cleaned up and uh, all reassembled. So let's let's give it a pull on the rope starter. Choke down here. I'm play with the choke so it warms up. Take a closer look. So we got voltage here, no current, because I don't have a load. Nothing plugged in over here. This is just here. Turning down the voltage, which is basically just an electronic throttle. As I turn this down, a big resistor inside the control box drops the voltage to the electronic governor, which is a solenoid, and that just closes off the airflow in the carburetor. Now I'm getting lower voltage. Right here, you can see the voltage kind of oscillating. That's the lowest it'll go. So there's no load, and so the uh, the solenoid is kind of going up and down as the generator generates electricity, self-regulating low. Got 22 volts there. That's what it's spec to run. All right, I want to try the electric the electric start now. Let's take a look at that. All right, now I've got a 12 volt battery hooked up to the same terminals used for output, outputting power to charge batteries or other DC equipment. Uh, I've got a full battery here uh, plugged in and um, I'm gonna try the electric start. Basically it just reverses the current to turn the motor and get it started. Very cool. I love it. Now I'm charging the battery that I used to start it. This old equipment's amazing. Subscribe to the channel and we'll keep showing you more.